In this video, we present the case of an urgent inpatient undergoing a routine coronary artery bypass graft surgery, which went terribly wrong. There were no relevant disclosures pertaining to this case. The story. A 74-year-old woman with hypertension and normal left ventricular function underwent coronary artery bypass graft surgery. In the operating room, the coronary arteries were extensively calcified, so much so that surgery by Braille was a thought. A quadruple cabbage was performed, lima to apical LAD, vein to right coronary artery, and a sequential vein to first and second marginal artery. Intraoperative transesophageal echo also showed normal left ventricular function in all views. Here is her aortic valve preoperatively and a view of her descending aorta. When performing the proximal for the right coronary artery vein graft, a double lumen was seen at the aortic punch site. When cardioplegia flowed in the marginal vein graft, blood came from the false lumen. When the cardioplegia stopped, the flow from the false lumen stopped. Aortic root dissection was suspected. The bypass to the marginal was redone with an end arterectomy required. After the cross clamp was removed, the left ventricular function became worse and worse to akinetic. and an intimal flap was seen intermittently closing the left main orifice in diastole, but no color was seen in the dissected root. In addition, significant mitral and tricuspid regurgitation were now present. The aortic root was clearly dissected, shown in these close-up views. Back to work. The heart was rearrested and a fifth bypass to the LAD was performed. On opening the mid LAD, a false lumen under pressure was encountered. An ellipse of calcium was carved from the coronary wall exposing the true lumen, and another vein graft was anastomosed to this true lumen, hoping to reverse the dissection. The second cross clamp time was 23 minutes. After the cross clamp was removed for the second time, within 35 minutes of being off pump, the left ventricle had recovered 95% of the preoperative function. The mitral and tricuspid regurgitation had returned to preoperative levels. She came off pump easily. Signs of the dissection were gone. The rouge dissection was still evident, but the left main was no longer obstructed. Even though her postoperative course was entirely uneventful, still being concerned about the root dissection, a transesophageal echo was done on her seventh postoperative day. Her aortic root appeared almost normal, with a residual thickening near the left main area. The mitral regurge was the same as pre-op, and the aortic valve showed trivial regurgitation. The left ventricular function had returned to normal. To recap, the left ventricle pre, intra, post, and seven days postoperatively. To recap the aortic anatomy, pre, intra, post, and seven days postoperatively. The story isn't over yet. At seven months, she developed chest pain, and angiography showed normal heart function, occluded marginal grafts, and a patent vein to right coronary artery, lima to distal LAD, and vein to mid LAD.
first the normal left ventricle, the native left coronary artery, and the vein to the right coronary artery system. Here is the lima to the apical LAD and the savior vein graft to the mid LAD. It is now 12 years later. She is still alive at age 86, living on her own, does have some angina, but is more limited by her arthritis. We are postulating this as the mechanism of the dissection the force from the cardioplegia at a pressure of about 140 to 150 millimeters mercury flowing in the vein graft into the diseased coronary artery created a dissection plane, went retrograde back to the left main, involved the aortic root, and then continued down the LAD to the apex of the heart at the site of the left internal mammary artery graft. This is the final result with three vein grafts and one IMA to the left heart. We have used this technique in several patients since, when faced with severely calcified arteries with a good-sized lumen that would otherwise not be able to be bypassed. This is an interoperative photo of such a case done recently, with the excised ellipse of calcium beside the donor LAD. This is a CT angio of another patient from about a year ago who needed an aortic valve replacement and a right coronary artery bypass because of an osteal stenosis. He had a long history of gastric upset and had been taking Tums or calcium carbonate for many years. His large dominant right coronary artery was densely calcified, so the ellipse technique was used. Seen in this view is the right internal mammary artery coming down along the right border of the heart. And in this view, we see the densely calcified right coronary artery system with the rema anastomosed to the PDA. This was done eight months post-op. We keep patients like this on clopridogrel for one year. These were the transit time flow measurements during cross-clamp with the patient on pump, off pump, and finally post-protamine. Lessons learned. Interoperative transesophageal echo is as useful in isolated cabbage surgery as it is for valve surgery. 2. Pressure in the cardioplegia delivery is now kept at a maximum of 80 millimeters mercury instead of the previous 140 to 150 millimeters mercury. 3. Ellipse carving of calcified coronary arteries is now a surgical technique used. And finally, guardian angels, though unheralded, are indispensable. We don't do this alone.